in the name of our ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Of course, I'm the gatekeeper of this internet program. Known, uh, oh my lord, I'm so tired. <laughs> I messed up my whole introduction. But anyway, I'm on, I'm here on YouTube. You can catch us on Daily Motion, uh, Vimeo, MySpace, and make sure that you friend me under Sheshore Tenobeta on Facebook. I am known, and y'all know, as the mighty, 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 ah! Uh, Angel Snub Nub Seven, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. And uh, this is a special edition of the Realities Temple, uh, live from Chicago. And next to me, of course, is my uh, student or minister or assistant, Brother Andre uh, Edmund 69. And uh, I want to just say and send a, a shout out to uh, Brother Harvey Superboy and Brother Randy Ryder for being our special guest and and uh, it was wonderful experience coming together with these brothers of like minds and I was tell you I was so tired but the 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 love and the understanding the caring and just being around others like yourself I mean I'm pretty sure brother Andre you agree with me I mean it was yes. a yep. it was a wonderful experience and 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 that's the type of something that I would like to see every day on every street corner in every building all over this earth all over this planet we need to get back to those things had nothing to do with what kind of car you drive who you are married to or anything like that just human beings that care for human beings meeting with one another with the mindset of trying to trying to come up with some type of plan to better not only those of us who are descendants of slaves in America but eventually we want to heal the human being period because even though black people of, of America we are in bad condition the bottom line is that all human beings are in bad shape because they suffer from the same ills and even if you rich you are sick all of humanity has a serious problem and some of us don't want to admit that we are sick and there are those who are sick that can't accept their sickness or who don't know so for those of us who know that we are sick and have accepted that sickness then we want to begin to the healing process then of course there are those who benefit from you being sick there are some people who want you sick because if you continue to stay well and they make their money from healing the sick if you become well then there's no need for a doctor I mean doctors don't have nothing to do if you become well now listen to this if you become well, there's no need for Jesus. Because Jesus came to heal the sick. The prophets of God came to heal humanity. But once you become healed, once, you're, once you are no longer wounded, then there's no more need for Jesus or Muhammad or any need for religion at all. So those who benefit from you being sick, they got to keep you sick so they can keep selling you Jesus, so they can keep selling you Muhammad and all these religions. Otherwise, if you become healed, there's no need for them no more. So you got to understand, there are so many who are not looking out for your best interest. But if you, if you really believe in a father or a mother, however you view God, your parents, that which brought you into creation, wants the best for you. They don't want you to stay sick all the time. We didn't have these religions for thousands and thousands of years, and humanity is still sick. Why is that? Have you ever thought about that? And that brings me to our one of our topics. We're going to talk about two topics real quick within these few minutes. And the first, the first topic 
is speaking of sickness why are people on YouTube the second topic we're going to deal with is why or could the white man or white people are they the natural enemies of black people we want to talk about these issues but we I want to first begin with the why are you on YouTube there are many reasons why people are on YouTube and much of it is self-serving it has nothing to do with black liberation it has nothing to do with with them wanting to help black folks at all many of you are on YouTube for self gratification you are grandiose as they were saying psychiatry you want somebody see in this society we suffer from low self-esteem so we need something to make us feel better so here we are brothers and sisters that's one of the reasons why we have a problem with unification is because you don't want to unify with Angel Snub Nub 7 is because you think Angel Snub Nub 7 is going to take some of your shine away from you now some of you watched the interview or the, the our get together that we had yesterday in Chicago with it was four of us brothers together we all came together did you see signs that anybody was trying to take somebody shine away from somebody there was no sign. we did not get together to debate some of these brothers to get to get together for a debate is not unification we already understand you don't agree on this we already understand our disagreements we come together to concentrate on that which we agree upon and how we're going to work together to change this condition there was no debates myself and brother Andre and brother Harvey Superboy and brother Randy we was together for hours and hours and hours and ain't nobody started no debate well brother no you's totally wrong you're on that you know in my opinion because so and so there was no debates of course there's disagreement you might find an error or something that you might think that somebody might say but there was no there was nobody looking for no argument or no debate that's not what we came together for we came together in order to see if we can compromise unite for a common purpose and goal and that goal and that purpose is supposed to be the betterment of our people and it's not going to happen unless we can compromise unless we can act like silver human beings and you will do that if you have real interest in what is best for your community because see whether you like me or not and you talk about oh, I love black people and I stand for black well I'm black this brother here is black brother Harvey Superboy is black we so we are part of that but you don't want nothing to do with us because we are different we don't want to accept what you're talking about it's about compromise in any relationship no matter how much you love your wife or your husband there has to be compromise because y'all go to bed together but the temperature in the room she might feel hot and you cold so there got to be some type of compromise where both of you can be comfortable in this room even with your children you're living in the same house but everybody is different but you got to be able to compromise in the house for the sake of family for the sake of peace so you can be family so that you can go ahead and do what y'all need to do as this unit thus unity and that's what we need to that's what we need to do I don't mind being a little cold so this brother can be comfortable I don't mind and this brother can compromise I don't mind uh, eating this certain food you know if that's all that we can get because this brother compromised for me here for this then I can compromise for him that we need to know how to learn how to work together but some of y'all are some selfish suckers it's all about you all about what you want all about what you pushing some of you your agenda is not even black liberation or black or, or part of a black revolution your agenda is pushing a religion I want all of y'all everybody to be Hebrew Israelites I want everybody to be Muslim I want everybody to be Christian that's not never going to happen even among yourselves and even in this world you see it's not going to happen everybody is different so that's not even going to happen that's not going to happen even among those with like minds 
Because everybody is different. Everybody's still going to see things a little different. When I'm hot, you might be cold. It's that, those things still going to happen. We have to be able to compromise and work with one another. But something that don't change is the common purpose and the common goal. And that is the betterment of us as a people. It's simple as that. Whether you want to separate from America or not, you want to put us in a position so that we can begin to accomplish and move forward just like all the other people that have come to this nation. This needs to begin to happen. Otherwise, we stay in a slave-like condition. And then not only are we slaves to the elite, but we become the slaves to those who really ain't about nothing for real. We are, are exploited by everybody because we totally on the bottom. Since you live in a, a society of exploitation, then the one who is exploited by all is the one on the very bottom, and that's where we find ourselves. We don't want to be there. We can be better than that. It's in us to be better than that. Right. Brother Andre, why don't you shoot him, shoot him some wisdom? Uh, I be seeing a lot of people making uh, YouTube uh, videos. Yeah. And they use the uh, excuse of uh, black unity and talking about issues that really concern blacks. But when it comes down to them actually putting some effort and trying to get together for one common goal, then they back out of it like they don't want right. like to have nothing to do right. with it. See how I'm going to get all out the camera? <laughs> That's what they do. They get out the camera. They back back. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And... Uh, if, 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 if you just on here to make have fun and play games stay don't use that as your title right you know what I mean uh, we trying to do something serious here if for y'all to come up out here and make all these videos and use all these titles and talk about stuff you really don't know what you're talking about mm -hmm. and then you try to push your religion mm -hmm. with all the Hebrew Israelites and the Moorish Americans and and the Muslims and all that, we're not going to uh, be disrespectful towards you, but in the same token, we feel religion only limits your ability to uh, express yourself freely. Because mm -hmm. you always got to live within the perimeter of what your uh, religion allows you to accept, right. express, and you lose a sense of your own individuality through rape. Through uh, religion, right? Just like you use a, you lose a sense of your individuality through joining gangs. So right. It's basically, the same thing. Yes, sir. That's right. It's the same effect when you really come down to it. If you want to be about uh, be about black unity, then you have to learn how to set that aside. Mm -hmm. You can pray all you want to for God to set us free. You can pray all you want to that God is gonna find a way. God ain't never found a way for nobody if they ain't made no effort. Right. You got to make some form of effort, some physical effort. Even if it's right, I'm making a flyer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show y'all something, <clears throat> brothers and sisters. I want to share something with you. See this flyer right here? Here's a flyer. See that flyer? It's upside down. <laughs> I turned it upside down. <laughs> but there it is. Okay, this is the reality sip on earth flyer, all right? And what we want to do, we want to make these flyers and we want to send them to you. We want to have it in a kind of way where we're going to have it on the screen. If you don't want to be a part of the reality sip on earth, e even if you don't have to be, your whole objective, if you want to do something for black people, Try to, if you want to help us, make a copy of the flyer. Pass the flyer out. Take one flyer. Take two flyers, as a matter of fact. Get a copy of them. And put down on the bottom, you can help black people mm -hmm. by making a copy and passing these flyers on. Right. It ain't going to cost you number 10, 15 cents, uh, 5, 10 cents to make two flyers, keep one for yourself and put down to help black people make a copy and pass it on. 
That's all you got to do. And you did your part for our people. The word needs to be spread. Quit worrying about losing your job and uh, Sam and Sue on uh, you know uh, on your job or in your class or in school or whatever. It's going to uh, do everything they can to try to get you fired or get you out of there. They're going to be against you because let me tell you something. They're probably against you anyway. Anytime yeah. you stand up and try to fight against the evils in the world, you're going to have people that's benefiting from it doing everything they can to try to stop you. A brother came to me and said, you know what, man? I'm going to take my do-rag off when I go to this uh, this area of the neighborhood. I said, why not? Why, why would you take your do-rag off? You still going to be a nigga to a lot of them people anyway, so it don't mm. make no difference if you have a do-rag on or not. And he thought, he said, you know what? I think you're right. I said, I know I'm right. Because when it come down to it, if you're not doing what white people want you to do for their benefit, yeah. you're useless to them. Yeah. Many times we think we got white friends and white associates. You're there in their presence for their benefit. You're not even going to be up around them if they can't benefit from you in some kind of way. Hmm. So you got to keep that in mind. At all times, get a copy of these flyers. Get a copy of any type of uh, 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 black unity mm -hmm. method. Something that's going on and out there that's trying to make this thing happen to where we can wake the consciousness of black people. Because we ain't number walking dead people out right. here, man. We think because we driving a nice car. Got the new latest uh, clothes and the new shoes, and we spending a hundred and fifty dollars on a pair of Air Jordans that we made it. Rich white people don't spend that much money on a pair <laughs> of gym shoes. They'll go to Walmart get four or five pair of gym shoes mm -hmm. for the price you spend for one, and driving around in nice cars and got nice homes. Mm -hmm. See, we sell ourselves out because we so we so attached to this image thing. It's all about image. Many of us are choose uh, 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 we we choose style over substance. Mm -hmm. I think Harvey Boy said something about that mm -hmm. yesterday. See, style changes. Hmm. What's in today could be out tomorrow. That's right. Not too long ago, it was hip to wear bell bottoms and an <laughs> afro. That was style. Mm -hmm. There was no substance behind that. Only what was socially acceptable at that at that, that period and area and time. The era and time, I'm sorry, but now it was cool and hip. But if I go try to dress like that, people think I got a damn costume on. <laughs> so there was really no substance in it. Hmm. But substance is something that's unchanging. It's a reality. Yeah. Thing is, we need clothes. It don't make no difference what style it is. That's substance. So, we have to learn how to come together and put all our petty differences aside. Don't, I don't give a damn about no damn religion. Don't come to me talking about no religion. If I have problems to pray to God and all that, look, man, you can pray all you want to, but if you ain't making no effort, you, it's useless. Mm -hmm. A person that need a glass of water can lay up in his bed all day and pray somebody come bring him a cup of glass of water. But if don't nobody bring that cup or glass of water, he going to he gonna die of thirst. Hmm. He going to dehydrate, sit there and die from dehydration. He had to make an effort to get up hmm. and go where there is some water and drink a glass of water. Whether he lap it up like a dog or, <laughs> or, or drink it out of a cup or hold his fat mouth down in the faucet, he got to figure out a way to make an effort to drink it. And you can put water in his mouth if he don't swallow it. This is going to sit there. It might choke him. Mm. I don't know. You know what I mean? But uh, it's all about making a conscious effort to do what needs to be done. People making these videos, talking about black consciousness and, and trying to, uh, 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 in, uh, trying to uh, intertwine religion with the black struggle, it's not working. Everybody don't want to be a part of some type of religion. We have to leave room for people to be their own individual selves. Right. But at the same time, do their little part to try to uh, 
try to do something for their own people, man. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just making one flyer, passing on. Five cent, ten cent, ain't, that ain't a lot. Just pass it on. And you want to help, put it on there, make a copy. If you want to help Black Unity, make a copy and pass it on. Every person that get one is going to say, make a copy, pass it on. That way I ain't got to spend no $10, $7 to make a whole bunch of copies. If people constantly pass it on, mm -hmm. you may see some ripped up and thrown in the middle of the street. But that's okay. We expect that. The thing is, you make an effort for your own people. That right there is enough to make an effort for your forefathers that was in slavery. Mm -hmm. That We trying to come up out of this modern day slave mentality we still have many of us and we need to overcome this petty jealousy yeah. that we have amongst each other we worried about somebody else getting a bigger spotlight than the other right or, right you got your web page and i got my youtube page or and say hey man look why don't you come on and ride with us and make a couple videos mm -hmm. or do some support videos and uh people don't want to do that because they think you gonna have the biggest spotlight right. than them. Right. They gonna take them away from their thing. We gotta come together. This white man ain't going nowhere, man. Not no time. He ain't going soon. nowhere. Not at the rate we going with our attitude. So I just want to close up with this. <clears throat> no matter what you do, no matter what you say, if you don't understand white supremacy. Nothing else is gonna make sense. Mm. You're gonna be confused, and confusing don't means you don't know which direction you're going to know what you're doing, and and you got a big question mark over your head. Confusion is you confusing something for something else, and you really think you're going in the right direction because somebody told you that this was the direction you need to go in. But going the other way is ultimately in your best interest. So therefore, that's what I'm saying, man. Don't be confused. Wake up, be conscious, and be brave. Use your conscience. You know something's wrong. Be conscious. Be brave. You got to be willing to make sacrifices. People are not going to like you. Your own family not going to like what you're doing. Your co-workers and things like that. These are people, sometimes you got to be willing to make sacrifices. Jesus made sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Moses made sacrifices. Lot made sacrifices. <coughs> All these people made sacrifices, man. Martin Luther King made sacrifices. Mm. Malcolm X made sacrifices. Marcus Garvey made sacrifices. You scared to lose your life. You don't even have a life. Your life is all scripted out by what somebody else does. And you got to live within the perimeter of, okay, so what? You get money and get a nice job. You still ain't free. Just because you got a nice job and you got a nice car and a nice home don't mean your kids <coughs> will. Because you free don't mean your kids are free. Because they still growing up in this culture where it's cool to be uh, negative. Everything bad is cool about being black. That's not the way we want to go. And uh, I have, that's all I got for right okay. now. But I will uh, come back in on something if you need me to, brother. All right. But go ahead. We're going to go ahead and swing into, into the next topic. And that topic is, is it possible that white people are the natural enemies of black folks? Now, I know some of you, because this particular version or story has been told many times, it comes from up out of the Nation of Islam. When they talk about the big head scientist Yakub and the grafting process that produced Caucasian people. When I was a young man, the first book I ever read by the Nation of Islam, Elijah Muhammad, was Message to the Black Man. And I read that chapter, The Making of a Devil. And, of course, we knew, or we were taught that the devil was some little red guy with this tail running around doing bad things. And he was also a spirit running around doing them. 
So I wanted to find out what Elijah Muhammad had to say about this devil character. And he gave this story, and it's so long, I don't want to really discuss it. Um, I would probably repost my video, The White Man Ruler of the World, where I really get into detail of how Elijah Muhammad taught us that story about how Yaku, the scientist, used the, the grafting process to produce Caucasian people. And uh, the reason why white people or Caucasian people are the way they are is because in order, in, in order to bring him into existence, the dark had to be murdered. The dark had to be killed. So this, if that is the process which brought the white man into existence according to Elijah Muhammad, then to me it's understandable of why the Caucasian race or the way they are today and it's not like you should be very I mean it's not like you should be angry at them that is what brought them into existence the destruction and the murder of the dark gene the darker people because if you did not murder the dark gene you could never have gotten the light and that was the process and in order for them to come into existence there they were there was the, the method to bring them into existence they had to lie they had to do they had to deceive in order for this process to work and then of course eventually you got this person with pink skin you know with and blue eyes and I, I it's a it's a long story some of y'all can, can 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 look that up and it sounds logical in essence because it gives a reasoning of why Caucasian people in their history have gone after to destroy dark people. And there's two more points that I would like to make on the on the issue. Now, in nature, now you, brother, I want you to listen to what I have to say. And audience, I want you to listen to what I have to say. And correct me very, very quickly if I'm in error. This is just my own little thought and opinion from just looking at this, this particular issue. There is no life force on this planet from the birds to the fish to the mammals there is no life form on this planet and this can even happen within the same species show me any life form on this planet that don't have an enemy do you can you name any not one any not one any life on this planet that don't have an enemy that have now you have the whale the whale is the biggest animal on this planet and it has no natural enemies when it becomes an adult but when it's smaller it still have its enemies when it's younger so it still has its enemies because you have those creatures that will eat its babies That's right. until it gets to the point where it's so humongous it's, it's not too much that can, can deal with a, a whale except man that's right. Okay. But every life form on this planet has an enemy. Is it possible that the white man is a natural enemy to black folks? Because all life forms, even within the same species, you have cats that don't like certain cats within the same species. They're all cats, but they are enemies to one another. They don't like them. As soon as they see one another, they, for some reason they hate who knows what happened or how they evolved, but they don't like one another. So, why do we believe that just because you're a human being, I guess you think that you're on top of the chain, that you don't or should not have a natural enemy? So, is it possible that the white man of whom we, we're trying to work with, and the reason why he can't work with us, because he's our natural enemy? And that is no fault of his own. Something through evolution caused this to happen because all life on this planet have some type of enemy of some sort of some sort then I want to put the frosting on the cake of where my thought process is coming from I thought about this a little bit now black people are the first we are the original people that means we had the first experiences that means we was the first ignorant okay because before you can learn anything, you had to be stupid. You had to be ignorant first before you can learn. 
Learning is a process that you're dealing with your brain. Because when you come into this world, you know nothing. So everything is learned. When you come into this, on this, now there are some things that's what they call instinctive. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 instinctive it's instinctive for you to be born, and as soon as you're born, you're looking for a breast to suck on. Mm -hmm. That's instinctive. You don't have to think about it, nothing. It's just something in you. I got to, you know, you're a baby. Because you, you know your brain not developed. But you know that you got to find that breath. Some woman better come up. Give me a plastic bottle. Something. Mm -hmm. right. You got to go have something. It's an instinct. Right. But as we mature, it becomes a learning process. Everything else is learned. So, the black, see, we love to say, oh, the black man is the original man. The Asiatic black man. The maker, owner, the cream of the planet Earth. You're also the first idiot. You are the first ignorant person. Because... All these things you just did not use, just not created, and all the, all of a sudden, oh, all this knowledge and wisdom and understanding just came and dropped out of the air. That ain't how this life works. I have seen nobody on this planet, and I've never seen it documented, where somebody was born and they know everything already. It's a learning process. So, in this life, we had to learn about mathematics and all these all these things that y'all brag about it was a learning process we had to start off ignorant and if you look at the history of ancient black people you can see this ignorance that's where the concept of God came from because we did not understand the reality of this life that's why many of the Egyptians they were sun worshippers they did not understand it became a God to them they worship worship the sun because they didn't understand the, the workings of the sun we don't trip off of it no more we know that it's a big ball of gas and all that but they did not know because they was ignorant of it. Even, even Egyptians still didn't know, really know what the sun was. Because if they knew what the sun was, they wouldn't have been worshipping it like it was. Even though they had all this advanced so-called technology and sciences and One stuff. One thing they knew for sure was a life force of some it was sort. Some, something was happening. It helped make things grow. Right. Which they could feed up on. And, uh, uh, um, right. Which they can cultivate a lot of, just life force itself was cultivated from the sun. Right. So they, uh, they understood that. Yeah. Now, out of ignorance, when you are ignorant and don't understand, out of ignorance, sometimes people make up answers for what they don't know. They don't know. And see, that's what religion has done. Religion comes into our lives and it gives us answers, made up fictional answers to that which we don't know and understand or that which we fear. Because the origins of religion really comes out of the fear of death. That's basically yeah. where religion came from. And it also makes uh, sense out of life itself. Yeah. It gives us answers. Answers not based on no type of facts. Imaginary, delusional, fictional type answers. It's, but if you're ignorant, you can accept those things because you you ignorant. So you, usually, basically, what you're saying is religion is the flip side of science. Of science. It's completely... <laughs> Reverse the right, science. Right. Science is something that can be proven, uh, that can uh, from uh, from trial and error. error. Uh, but religion in itself gives us uh, a, a a answer, basically the ignorant uh -huh. answers to questions that will pop up in every human being's mind. Yeah. Why are we here? Well, yeah. Why are things are the way they right. are? Right. You know. Why come the sun go up and down uh -huh. or appear to go up and down? Right. Uh, why come the sky blue? Uh -huh. Why come clouds are white? Mm -hmm. See, these are things that will come up in each living person with a sound mind, a sound working mind. They ain't got to read or write or know nothing, no right. account. But these will be questions that's going to come up, you know, in a person, in a human being's mind. You, and you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to fear death anymore because you die and go to another place. That's right. See, religion comforts us. That's where the religious ideas basically come from. And I also, while we're on the subject of religion, not, we're not going to get off the topic, but uh, religion also gives us, it's the base of the slave-master slave relationship. Because in religion, God is the slave master. And you and those who are believe in God, you become the slave. Because you said, you said, my life and my death is all for Allah. Everything I am is for Allah. Nothing for you. Now you got a life of your own, but nothing for you. Everything you do, go to some master or this God. That's the same concept behind slavery. Everything that slave is belongs to his master. 
That's where the slave concept comes from. You have a higher person, which is God, and a lower person that exists solely for the benefit of this higher person. Same thing with God. You're nothing. Just you are sent and you do it with a smile. I'm nothing without God. What? You don't, do you realize what you said? That means nothing is of you. You only exist for God. So what's the purpose of living if you can't enjoy the life yourself? What's the purpose? You only exist for the for the benefit of some higher being, some purpose. That's where the concept of slavery comes from. Out of religious teaching. That's where it comes from. And you're happy to say that I'm nothing without God. Well, you might be nothing without God, but this is my life. And I live it to the best of my ability and I'm, my enjoyment. And you know you're here. And I know I'm here. And it's for me. And if, I, if I'm going to serve somebody, I'd rather be dead than serve some other sucker. The only reason why I exist is for them. So what's the sense of, of me being born? Just so, so I can benefit somebody else. It but, don't make no logical sense, man. But they can enjoy their life. They're enjoying their life. Having a good time. You, and you serve it. And you here just to serve them. And, and look at the, the masses of the people on the planet. You are slaves. Because y'all go in and work every day. But that work that you're doing, it don't benefit you. Going to work to make a car. I mean, they give you a little, what they call some wages. But making them cars or, or frying some hamburgers, whatever that you're doing, that's not no real benefit to you. You could care less. What we're trying to do is a great, has a greater purpose than, I'm not saying nothing wrong with working every day. Because right. we have to do that in order to survive. Right. But at the same token, there got to be some greater purpose. Right. You serving a God. But you're not doing nothing to try to change things for the better for all human beings, including including yourself. Yourself, you first. You're the most important person right. in your life. Right. Yourself. You more important than your kids, your wife, your mother. Yeah. Because you are you. Are you? You know. You can feed everybody else, but you don't feed yourself. You gon' right. you're gonna die of starvation. Right. So therefore, not only do you feed yourself nutrients for your body, you gotta feed yourself nutrients of knowledge and understanding. Of the, the world and the environment that you live in. Right. The world. I mean, you need to understand that. But see, there's a process you go through. When you start realizing a lot of things about life and about yourself, you go through a depressive stage because you, you become depressed because you realize a lot of things <coughs> that you believe once is not true. Mm -hmm. So you've been walking around in the dark and didn't even mm -hmm. know. So now, you have to rebuild on a whole no totally different person. This is the same effect that it will be saying being re reborn. Mm -hmm. You don't pray and, and be blessed and, and be baptized and be reborn. Reborn also comes here. You have to be reborn. Your mind has to be renewed. Mm -hmm. And you have to let go a lot of things. First, you got to find out where you at. Psychologically. Emotionally and mentally. And then you have to understand your environment, how these things play against and with each other. Right. Then once you learn that, then you realize, wow, you know, where am I? I'm in this wilderness. Then you become to learn how to find your way. But there's going to be <coughs> some depression. There's going to be some anger. But from there, that process of growth will take place. It'll happen. But you just got to be willing and you got to be brave and you got to be willing to go through that process and then once you come into yourself into your true reality of the world we talking about reality we ain't mm -hmm. talking about religion we ain't talking about spooks and gods and nothing. we talking about reality man what we have to deal with we talking about this right, right here. here this skin we talking about this the air you breathing the air you breathe people say well well if there's not a god or if, if, if there's not a a spirit world, you 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 can't see spirits, and also you can't see air, but we still breathing it. We never said that there's no world beyond this world. Don't know. I don't, I, we don't know. Yeah. But we know we here. I don't want to make up no fictional world. You know, I, I want if, if there's a spirit world, I want to know for a fact. I'm mean, these these places that we're they talking about is fictional. They, you never been there. Ain't nobody ever came back from these worlds and told us about it. No. I want to deal with what, what we know for real, not some imaginary. That's why you have to believe. If you, if you, 
uh, have to believe, then it's not fact. It could be true. It might not be true. I'm here, and we should we should want to deal just with what what is our reality. Oh, just you know, one thing mm -hmm. I, we know for sure that uh -huh. before a person is born, they were somewhere. Before uh -huh. they was conceived into the womb, they was in some somewhere. Mm -hmm. Then, when they come into existence from birth, mm -hmm. we know they're here. Yeah. Also, we know when people die, they go somewhere else. We don't know if their whole ex being ceases when the body ceases to function. But we know that there are three different stages of existence or three different stages of being. And that is being not conscious of, of the reality of the world. We know there's a being of life, which is where we are now. And we know there is somewhere else that they go when they leave this world. But we don't know. Right. So why talk about so it? So why even talk about <laughs> it? That's all we know. Yeah. So why even go into, well, uh, uh, all these different religions and their different beliefs? Because they all believe in different things. If you have facts, there's no need to believe. There's no need to believe. And don't you think that it would be better to know rather than believe? Because yeah. it's just like a, a simple example I use all the time. If you and I are waiting on a cab. Okay, we waiting on the cab. We tired. We need to get back to the hotel. Would you rather believe a cab is coming, or would you rather know that a cab, a is, cab coming. is coming? Or not coming. Yeah. Because if you know he ain't coming, then you can figure out some right. else way to get to your destination. True. But if you sitting up there hoping and believing that a cab coming, and there's no reason, no logical reason, because you didn't call a cab. <laughs> Nobody said he was going to call a cab for you. Mm. You ain't seen a cab mm. in the whole three or four hours or mm. days or weeks since you was there. You just... Thinking and hoping that a cab is going to come. Hmm. That's the same thing with religion. Yes. If you ain't made no effort to make a cab come to you and pick you up and take you to your destination, there's no real reason for you to believe it. And people all around you can say the cab coming, the cab coming. They still waiting there for the cab to come. Mm -hmm. well, you, how long you been? Oh, I've been here 40 years. Uh. Still waiting for a cab. <laughs> That's what I'm rapping about. <coughs> Same man, same mind frame. Uh -huh. Same, it's, it got the same uh, 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 idea to it. But you, you know what I'm talking right. about, man. With yeah. that, man. I mean, yeah. a lot of people when they cleanse and hold on to religion, they really don't know what they're talking about because religion keeps you from thinking freely. Right. That's right. You know. You get a lot out of Buddhism because Buddhism teaches you to think freely mm. and to question reality. Mm. You have to question reality. Mm. Religion keeps you, don't question reality, just don't question God. Mm. They just want to keep you ignorant. Mm -hmm. Keep you thinking inside a circle and you don't want to go out the perimeter out of that circle because then you'll be setting yourself free. Sound like more, that sounds like slave teaching, slave, slave mentality. Yeah. I believe keep, keep, it is. Keep, keep, keep you keeping the mind confined in some certain space. You can't evolve from from that, you know. But yet, and still, you said that you believe in God, and God is not confined. No, exactly. God is universal. God is, is is everywhere. You can't be everywhere when you're in a confined space. They call that incarceration. Yeah, all right. So <laughs> that's people, called incarceration. So people basically <laughs> imprison some religion. Right, it imprisons you. It imprisons you because you can't go no further than that. And if something, if somebody says something outside of that concept, you can't comprehend, and you don't even want to, you dare leave that the, the, the safety of your of your cage. You're afraid to to go outside of the cage, cause cause you become institutionalized. That's right. Institutionalized in these religious concepts. Cause you could totally institutionalization. You totally rely uh -huh. on this institution. Yeah. For everything you need, right? Just like a child relies completely and totally on an infant, a newborn relies totally and completely on his mother to feed on her breast. Linus to his blanket. That's right. Everywhere Linus go, he got to take that blanket. Take it. There blanket. you go with that Bible. There you go. In that in your in your in your arm or the Quran. Yep. That's your that's your blanket, your security right. blanket. Right. You know. But they do have some good teachings in them. You can learn a lot. It's not to say that it's, it's, it's the teachings is, is bad over overall, but but you allow yourself to be confined. You yeah, I mean you can take whatever your belief system is. Don't lose your own sense of individuality. Yeah, that's right. That's all. 
That's all we're saying. That's all we're saying. It's so, we're not saying it's bad to believe in this and bad to believe in that. But you still have to hold on to your own individuality. Who you that's are. who makes who you, you are. Who you? That's what makes who you who you are. Mm -hmm. Your own individuality. Religion wants us to all be the exact same. Clones. Clones. You ever seen that movie <laughs> Pink Floyd, Inside the Wall? Uh -huh. They all looked at just exactly alike. Mm. Everybody, another brick in the wall. Mm. Everything is all exactly like. There's no individuality. Mm. The, the whole message to that video. Now, I'm not saying that I like Pink Floyd or nothing, <laughs> but I've seen it. And uh, the whole message to that video was that the in the machine is trying to make us all one clone. Mm -hmm. To all think alike. So that the people on the top can control everything. Mm. As long as we all in the same frame of mind, the people outside, thinking outside the box, control people inside the box. Right. Incarceration. Yeah. Institutionalized. Yeah. So when people come with all these different religions, I'm a, I'm a Moorish American science, I'm a Hebrew Israelite, I'm a mm -hmm. uh, Yahweh Yahweh yeah. deal. All that does is put you in a circle. Let me know that you're incarcerated, that you're a prisoner. Yeah, you're a prisoner inside somebody else's ideology of right. what uh, what's the purpose of life is. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. got to find your purpose of life because your purpose of life may be different from somebody else's purpose of life. They have privileges, but they're not free. That's right. And, and, and when you're incarcerated, you can get so much privileges, it'll give you the illusion that you're free. That's right. Because I don't see people that's been incarcerated, but they get privileges. They can get on a plane and go home and see their mama and come back. They, they, that makes them feel real good. But you're still incarcerated. You still got to go back. <laughs> right. It's just like a dog. You, you set them on a, you get them on a leash, you get them to a certain place uh -huh. in the field, and you let the chain go and let them run around. Yeah. Or you let him run around in the backyard, but when at some point he gonna have to return right return back, back to where he come from. He obligated to do that. Yeah. Ain't no way on earth he gonna go out there and I'm gonna let him just run and do uh -huh. what he wanna do anytime he get ready to do it. He bringing his butt back up in here <laughs> because see I'm in control of his life. Mm -hmm. Same thing with religion. Right. It's in control of your life. Whoever controls that religion, whoever the leaders, whoever control that religion controls you. You know, you get some religious people. They don't want to hear nothing about no logic, no uh, reason, or nothing. That takes away. That's that's why that's why they make it that way. They don't want you to think logic. They don't want you to think logically or have reason or use common sense. No, that what makes it a slave teaching. No, you start talking about logic and reason. Oh man, I don't want to hear that. Okay. You need God. Uh, you need to pray. I'm gonna pray for you. I'm gonna pray for you. And then these these religions are very peaceful. You talk all this peace. But look at all the wars that you, you war among. Yeah. And then just, I'm very sure there are probably people listening to this video, Christians or Muslims, whatever. And just the fact that we're talking like the way that we do, hate filled in your heart, anger. You want to murder somebody, but yet it's still you so peaceful. Right. If, if these religions were so peaceful, how could there be so much violence and hate and stuff around the world when you got a church or a mosque and all these religions everywhere? How could, how could hate and war among and all this murder and, 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 and all this stuff, how could it even exist when you got so much religion on every corner? And they dominate and influence the world. But this continues. Something is wrong because you're not thinking. You got to look at the whole picture. Something is wrong somewhere. I think y'all been lied to. Like Malcolm said, you've been bamboozled. Yeah, they've been bamboozled. And if Malcolm was alive and he was representing Islam, I tell Malcolm too. I said, "Well, brother, you've been bamboozled too." But I think Malcolm was on his way to realizing that, because Malcolm believed in Elijah Muhammad and Islam. But Malcolm, you—if you notice and study Malcolm, Malcolm had—he was a thinking person. His mind was moving. I think Malcolm was on his way to the Reality's Temple. That's what I think Malcolm yeah. was on his way to. Yeah. And and you see what what our temple. It's the temple itself is not <coughs> a, a physical place. Yeah. It's a state of mind. Mm -hmm. It's a state of, a, of achieving your own reality. Yeah. But see, one thing for sure is there's only one reality. Mm -hmm. We can have all these different views about what is and what isn't, but it's one reality. 
And once we accept our reality in its whole totality, yeah, totality, we can uh we can start thinking for ourselves and come up with solutions to the problems that that ails us and, and it's, it's our people are sick, man. Fictional problems, I mean fictional answers cannot solve real problems. No, they can't. That's why you're in the condition that you're in. We no, bring in we, we refuse to accept our reality and bring in we bring in uh, fictional, delusional, fantasy answers from fantasy places and think that that's going to solve real problems. A sister told me the other day, mm -hmm. she said, well, you know what? I prayed up on it. And, yeah. everything, and, and well, she something was going on with, she prayed up on something and everything seemed to went right at one time. And she said, you know what? See, that's what prayers does. I mean, yeah. when I got there, the guy came with the car and the uh -huh. car was fixed. And he said, well, you know what? The problem wasn't this. It was this. And the study owned us $500. You owned us, uh, only owed us $250. Uh -huh. uh, and then that later on that day, when I went to work, I thought I was going to be late. And they had a meeting. And I was like, oh, Lord. You know, she really thought that uh -huh. all these uh, coincidences was a sign from her belief or God yeah. that he can make things happen. Prayer. But I, I'm thinking to myself, look, those things happen because they happen. Right. They ain't no different than me taking a, a, a pop can and throwing it and it just so happened to land straight up. Mm -hmm. That's coincidence. Mm -hmm. It had nothing to do with God. It was a coincidence. Where are these miracles and stuff when everything go wrong? You know, when, when, when tornadoes break or tear down churches and when 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 little children who are innocent be murdered you know where's all this guy where's all where's all this stuff that they when things go bad when they when things go bad you see a lot of people they get quiet but as soon as things go oh look what the god did oh look what jesus did what about all this other stuff this other hell that's going on here how come this all this power this god is not stopping all this hell that's going on it's just a reality of life you live and you die Sometimes things go right, sometimes things go wrong. That's just how things go. Yeah. Sometimes you, you are loved, sometimes you are hated. Yeah. Sometimes some, the, the reality is you might be loved all your life. The reality is you could be hated all your life. That's just, that's just the reality of our, that's just the, 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 the life that we live. That's right. That's right. And with that said, we're going to bring this uh, talk to conclusion by going back to the original topics. And that is, are white people the natural enemies of black folks and if you go to scriptures since we was talking about religion mm -hmm. God created the devil the devil did not exist until God and that, that's messed up in itself that whole idea why would you here you are God the all knowing why would you make an enemy to yourself and yeah if God that's knew, crazy and if he knew all things why we why we even here in the first place but look at this just, just to stay within this realm Okay, I'm a father, and you my son. I'm going to purposely nurture you and teach you. Okay, son. Now, and when you get 16, I want you to stab me, and and I want you to when I when I'm asleep, go in my wallet and steal from me. I'm going to purposely raise something to be my enemy. Who do you know? What what in nature? What can what kind of example? What do you where can we find where somebody actually on purpose? Raise the enemy. You, know, you have children. When they grow up, they hate their parents for some reason or another. But the, the parents, ain't nobody purposely going to raise somebody to be their enemy. No, it don't make sense. That don't sound, that don't make sense. It, it makes no logical sense. And, and for, for a God that's supposed to be so wise and smart, that don't, I mean, that, how, is, how is that wise and smart from somebody? Why would you raise them? And then give them almost as much power as you have. Mm -hmm. And then you so weak or whatever, I don't know what you're trying to prove. But you can't even protect your children from this cat. You know, whatever he want to do, he gets in their minds and mess with them, whatever. You can't even stop it. Then you blame the children who you couldn't protect, who don't really know nothing about this sucker. You blame them for falling victim to the... <laughs> no, they don't, don't make it. It doesn't make <laughs> it don't sense. Make no sense to me. And, and, and I thought about that when I was like 12 years old. Yeah. If God really do all things, why would... And, and knew... You gotta uh, what that old saying goes. How they how they usually use it. Uh, well, uh, you gotta be good. Uh -huh. or God gonna punish you, uh -huh. and uh, God just want all people to love Him and, and this and that. 
and um, if you want to go to heaven, you got to do this and you got to do that. But my thing is, when God supposedly created Jesus and created the devil, mm -hmm. why would, like you say in the same yeah. sentence, why would he create something when he already know the outcome <laughs> right. in the first place? <laughs> I mean, it don't it don't make no logical sense. It don't, it don't make no sense, you know. And then this guy, okay, God created the troublemaker, okay. Yeah. Then you get in, in trouble, God will punish you and threaten to punish you and send you to hell forever. And you don't see what God to punish people throughout the Bible. You don't see how God struck people down and undone. He punished them for for doing evil. But the main troublemaker, he ain't did nothing to the nothing. main troublemaker. Nothing. <laughs> What has God ain't did, ain't did nothing to the devil himself? Why? Here's the main troublemaker, the cause. You know, it's just like this so-called. It's just like this so-called war on drugs. They get all the little little fellas off the street. But the main cat cats that's 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 doing this. You you you're not touching. You're not putting a dent in them. And it don't make no logical <laughs> sense. <laughs> there is no reason <laughs> or logic that can act. It, it don't make sense, man. <laughs> At all, it don't mean. But anyway, that's y'all. I mean, that's if that's that's what you believe in, you know. But we just you have to bring that up, and I need to. I want to bring. But we long as they long as they know where yeah. we coming from, right. where our thought process yeah. is. Yeah. Because I'm quite sure some people came to that thought process or or that question in their mind. Why is it? <laughs> yeah. Why? I mean, I don't, it don't make. It don't. It just no matter how I try to flip it around and try to. I just cannot get. It's not logical. Something about that just. But religion also teaches them not to question God. So that's how you keep them in line. Don't question God. Don't question. Don't question that. Don't question this belief system. Uh oh, God talking to me. He said, "Why are you looking, listening to this video anyway?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said <laughs> to some people who actually yeah. believe it. Right. Why are you listening to this video? Turn it off now, begotten son. <laughs> that's right. But uh, so we have God. He created this devil, an enemy unto himself. Then, I reference back to the story of Yakub, the story that Elijah Muhammad taught. Give me one second. Okay. Brother. Excuse Please. me, people. I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, but we're going to keep this rolling while you're gone. Go ahead, brother. <coughs> okay. It's all good. All right. So, <coughs> now, okay. so we have, we have the, uh, God created the devil. An uh, enemy unto himself. I may we may I made reference to Elijah Muhammad story of Yakub. These black people made an enemy to themselves. They made black folks made the white man through the grafting process. Okay? They made this enemy. So so how can you get angry? How can you get mad and upset when you created the enemy. You created this being. How can we get mad or angry at, at the devil or Satan? Satan did not create himself. The one whom you love and give yourself to, that's the one that, 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 that created your problem. Satan. So how are we going to get angry and mad at these creatures? The white man, this devil person that God created, they did not create themselves. They came up out of the God or the black people. Now we're going to go back real quick to ignorance. If you are the original man, the Asiatic black man, and we want to brag about all these accomplishments, the sciences, and who, who and what we are or was, that's all well and good. But at one time, you had to be ignorant. You had to be void of knowledge. And when you're void of knowledge, you are susceptible to fictional theories, fictional stories. Because we don't want to say, for some reason, the human being never wants to say, I don't know. And what human beings do, they make up stories. And they become fearful. Now listen to me. They become fearful of what they don't understand. So, let me let me use this as an example to try to make my point on this issue. 
Of course you know we are black. I don't really like using that, but we're going to, because we're more than skin color, but but that's our understanding. We're, gonna, we're just going to use the, 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 we're melanated people. We have color to our skin. Okay. That's common. But when you're ignorant, and when you're ignorant, you use, you are become used to what is common. So what happens when you we all are so black, but then up from up out of us come an albino person, a light skinned person from out of nowhere? Due to the fact that we have fear of the unknown, we don't have understanding. Right now in Africa, when you have albinos and and lighter skinned black folks born, some of these people view them as devils filled with some type of, of, of sickness, some type of curse. They, they've been cursed by God or something like that. And when you are cursed by God and things of this nature, and when you are frowned upon, then those who are ignorant and don't know they become fearful and sometimes you are harassed you are terrorized because you are different you are killed like right now in Africa they believe that albinos have some type of magical powers if you kill them you can cure diseases or something to that effect or whatever they believe that is it possible, and this is just a theory, for those ancient African people who never seen a white man before or whatever, it is not beyond, beyond comprehension and logic that they would view the white man as a curse, something strange, a spawn of the devil, because they did not understand what had happened or what these strange people was about. So they began to harass them and mistreat them. And even according to Elijah Muhammad's story, that's what they did. And then they forced them, they made them naked and forced them across the desert and marched them out of the Holy Land. Now, this is, this is logic and common sense. If you was treated that way from these dark people, you was, you were stripped of your clothes, felt like you was a curse and, and an animal, and then marched across some sand, taken out of paradise and put into a harsh environment. Because Europe is a harsh environment. It's cold as hell. Now when they went there, they didn't have all this fur and whatever that they eventually grew to protect them from the elements. They was naked, didn't have all that, and, they, and put them over there. They went across hot desert into a cold environment. Wouldn't you, if that happened to you, wouldn't you have animosity toward them dark people for doing that to you? So if you combine the story of what happened to Elijah Muhammad, and, and if you combine what how we treat that which is strange to us, isn't it logical? Why Caucasian people would have some kind of hatred and malice towards black folks because of what you did to us in our past? Mm. Wouldn't you? I mean, right now, many of y'all hollering black power family because of what they did to us in slavery. But what if it is but what if the what if the truth of the matter is that we caused our own situation? We created the situation. And then we turn right around because of our ignorance, we treated them in that type of manner. And that made manifest, they held that grudge, they held that within their, maybe their subconscious throughout their existence. And they don't even, they probably don't even know it or not, but it's stuck. So whenever they see something dark, I'm going to get them. Revenge. Just how like you feel. Black power because of what they did to us in slavery. Now, 
you have to look at how they felt, and now they are do or doing this did the same thing to to us, wanting revenge. Do you think it's possible that as time went on that they lost the? It's it's not consciously uh -huh. in them, but it's subconsciously a part of the fiber of their being. Yeah, right. I don't yeah. know if I use that word. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's subconsciously it's in part the of fiber. It. Yeah. If you look at your genes, you see fibers going in, you know, intertwining. So it's so it's a part of their makeup. Right. And even though they might have been so called savage, but I'm very sure because even animals, animals teach teach their babies about their enemies. That's right. Rabbits teach. They show rabbits and other animals, they show their babies about that one, you know, watch the dog. You know, cats tell the little kitten, that's your enemy. Mm -hmm. They teach, they can teach. So I'm pretty sure those white people back in them days or whatever, they can teach, they taught their babies. Them old black ones, those the enemy. They did this to us, some kind of way. They might not be intelligent like we are today or nothing like that, right. but just like animals, they everybody have a way of communication. Right. And they let them know, they did this to us. You created this enemy. We created this problem. So how are you going to hate and be all angry? And even Elijah Muhammad taught. He said, why do you? It's not about hate. You just have to understand what has happened. And understand that that's, that's their nature and their makeup. And once you understand that's, that's their nature and makeup, then you know how to deal with them. Just like a snake. A snake is poisonous. You ain't supposed to handle no snake. It's not meant for you to pick up no snake and pretend it's a pet. He's going to bite you. That's right. But if you understand that snake, then it's possible that you can pick him up and handle him because you understand the nature of a snake. You understand that which would bring, make him feel fearful, that would make him bite you. Mm -hmm. Of course, snake, you can't never tell about a snake. Snakes will bite you. Tell about but there are many people who can take up because they understand the nature of the snake, understand this snake. They can pick up the snake, even the one that still had a fame. And they play with the snake. And you see snake charmers all the time. They take the little whistle. The thing, you know snakes are deaf. They can't really hear. They go by vibration. And that's really what the snakes are responding to the movements of the snake charmer. But you understand that uh, psychology of the snake. So our problem is we don't understand the psychology of white folks. And then we get mad. Black power, kill the white man. It ain't, it's not that. First of all, he's more than just physical because now he's part of your mentality. That's right. You've been living under this person for 400 years. And I don't care how much you scream black power and, and sell bean pies or, or, or you dress in these, these garments that make you think that you're Hebrew or Morse or whatever you think that you are. you still a white man in the mind. You part of He's here now. Because he's gone beyond skin color. He's here. And that's why you can't move no further. Because you, you, you haven't been able and you don't have the knowledge to go outside of what he's given you. That's why you call yourself black. Ancient, ancient, our ancient ancestors, I see no information where they call themselves black. Nope. They never called themselves black or African. Never even entered their mind. Never entered their mind. They so never called themselves black. contact with, your, with your, your European. Then he put his own classification right. under us. While right. he was under his umbrella, under his yoke. Right. Well, he could set the pace and say what is and what isn't. Right. So every time these people said black power, all thing they're doing is just basically, it's a continuation of white power. Because black, that concept came from them. It didn't come from our people. So when you said black power, you don't know it, but you really subconsciously, all thing you're doing is still promoting white supremacy. That's right. Because that's where it comes from. When you talk about, I want to return to Africa, they renamed that continent Africa. If you're going to go to Africa, where you going to go? There's a yeah. lot of places in Africa. Africa is over 50, 50 nations in Africa. Where you going to go to some wild desert, wilderness somewhere? They don't know. The Sahara? I mean... Go back know. to Africa, and they, these people have no alliances with Africans. Don't know, don't speak no African languages. You go to Nigeria, one of them places like that, yeah. you a white man to them. Yeah. We would be. Yeah, right. That's, that's how they would view you. Our whole nature, our whole mannerism. Is of a European, European. Uh, 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 way of uh, carrying ourselves. Right, it's, that's right. The whole demeanor is European. It's European. To them? Yeah. I don't care how much you holler black power and all that kind of stuff. You look like a, a, a white man to them. That's right. Because that's what we are. 
That's why some of y'all, just the thought of leaving here, even just the thought, just the thought of saying separate from white people, it, it, it messes with you. It's got to be, it's got to be some kind of way to stay here among the white folks. You know, I hear these black folks that's supposed to be so black power, so black liberal, but when you really talk about for real separation, some kind of way to work with the white. You've been trying to work with white folks for 400 years. It don't work. What do we want from them? Why would yeah. They, what is it that we looking for from them? What is you know, it? What is it we looking for? We looking for uh, a lot of people, man, just feel like, well, we want to live among them. We want to be able to have some of the technology and all the things that they have. But at the same token, we want to be able to have our own thing yeah. amongst, uh, right up under them. Right. That's still living in the master's house, man. Same, same. That's right. Living in the master's house. Like the dog. Right. He want to rip him like a cat. Uh -huh. You know how some cats, they want to rip and run and come back and eat. But when, yeah. they, when they get done eating, they want to go back out. Yeah. Can't live like that. Right. Man. You have to make your choice. You have make to make a choice. Decision. What you want to do. Do you want to be out there in the wild for yourself mm -hmm. and sphinx for yourself? Or you want to live up under the rule of white people? You can't have it both ways. Right. And plus they they are and plus we already know they are not going to never accept you and we just talked about is it natural for black people or white people to be or are they the natural enemies of black people? If that's true, is so you'll never be able to live among them because you're natural enemies. And up to this point, that's all you they, they proven it. Yeah. We didn't prove it. They proved they it. They prove it through actions. Through action. That they are natural enemies. Right. And I'm not saying every white person that you're going to meet and you know, encounter is going to cut your throat. Right, because even among cats and dogs, some cats and dogs get along together. Yeah. No no big deal. But overall, but we overall, know that cats and dogs don't, don't get, along. get along. It's simple as that. Yeah. It's best to keep them two away from one another. That's right. That's right. That's right. You got to keep them separate. You're always going to have exceptions to any rule. It's going to be always be exceptions to any rule. But the thing is, he might have people of white... Uh, white people that he associate with, I have people, white people that I associate with and talk to, but they already know what my belief system system is. I don't yeah. hide it from them. Yeah. And many of them know what I say is true, and many of them just rather ignore that uh, that aspect of my personality and just deal with me on the terms of whatever it is we dealing with, whether yeah. we're working together or we doing a certain thing together. They want they don't want to personalize with me in no kind of way, which I'm I'm, I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm going to keep on saying what I'm saying. And I don't have a belief. I'm dealing with strictly logic and reason. Right. And all that together is reality. Right. You know, it, I mean, if people don't like what I'm doing, that's their problem. I got family members. No, I make videos. No, I'm uh, together combined with uh, Talik. And they don't even watch my material. Hmm. It may be some who watch my material secretively. But for the most part... They don't support what I'm doing at all. They don't support it. But as soon as I started getting, no if I was to ever get notoriety uh -huh. and this thing lift up off the ground, yeah. then they're going to stop peeping behind the corners mm -hmm. and they want to be a part of something. Mm -hmm. We don't need people like that. Peeping behind the corners. Mm -hmm. You know? You're either going to be all the way in or you're going to be all the way out. Mm -hmm. Just like when black people was marching for civil rights and Equal opportunity and things like that. We did that. White men didn't give it to us. We had to fight for that. Right. But now you got other people of different races, uh, particularly the Latino community uh, of uh, uh, Mexican descent. They riding on the coattails of what we did. Right. 50, 40 years ago, right. 30 years ago. Right. And they, we don't have no support whatsoever from them. Nope. But we supported. We. We set the stage and the platform for the civil rights movement. Now, when people think, when white people hear the word civil rights, it's like saying a bad word to them. Mm. They don't like the sound of civil rights. Civil rights means somebody begging for something. Mm. Asking for handouts. Mm -hmm. But when you really look at what the word civil rights mean, we have certain rights. Civil. Break it down to them, man, because a lot of people got the wrong idea what civil rights mean. They think we beg and a grind, somebody did us wrong. We break it down, man. Well, we you know what Malcolm said. Malcolm said, "How can you, how can you uh, fight for civil rights when you don't have human rights?" 
So you have to be respected as a human being first. How can you expect to be treated civilly and you, you're not seen as a human being? That's right. And if you have human, human rights, you don't have to worry about civil rights right. when you are treated like a human being. Because yeah, when you're dealing with a dog, remember they said that we were not, we were not, we were not seen as a full human being. Three fifths human. They said it was three fifths human, and they did that, and they did that. They made us, th they made us three fifths human being, really, so the rich, rich landowners that owned the slaves could take advantage. They counted their slaves as, uh, so they could take advantage of the voting process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for that, then I guess we would be one hundred percent animal. <laughs> yeah, we would. <laughs> but we have to uh we have to be we have to get we have to be respected as a human being first. So if you have human rights you don't have to worry about civil rights. That's right. And then what has happened is that our ancestors won these privileges for us and we've gotten comfortable in the in, in the illusion of the freedom. The children. Because Nobody continued. They, they, they act like the, the the fight was won, and that's where the mistake was made because they took advantage of these of the, some of these successes and became comfortable in those privileges. You know, and that's where that's where we stand right now because they got comfortable in those privileges and they act like the fight was over with. You you know what I noticed? Yes. You got a lot of right wing minded people and liberals feel like look. We're not hanging y'all from trees. Yeah. Y'all uh, achieve, y'all uh, uh, have uh, gained the right to, uh, to public and, and to public accommod accommodations. Yeah. Why is y'all still crying? But see, every, as we achieve a certain thing, they do something else which keeps us at a standstill. Mm -hmm. Now they got so slick to where now. They do this so showcase. They put certain black people right. in certain positions to make it look equal. Yeah. But when you look at the masses of blacks, uh -huh. it's a whole totally different ball. Totally Many of us screwed up. Yeah. And in bad situations, you got to learn how to understand that these people, these evil white people, are constantly deceiving us, mm -hmm. man. Constantly, man. Mm -hmm. They the arch deceivers of the world. Mm-hmm. Or arc deceivers. I mean, people got different ways in there yeah. how they pronounce that word. They arc deceivers, man. The reason why they're in the position they're in because they're they're masters of deception. That's right. Tricksters, manipulators. They ma white people are masters of deception. Yeah. And I'm gonna say it. Good actors, great actors. They get Academy Awards, and some of them not even not even part of Hollywood. Some some of them they you call them president. Or a congressperson, or your school teacher, that's right. Or your lover, they Masters know how to set it set. They know how to smile and act real, real good. Mm -hmm. You know, and you when we fall for it, because we don't know no better, and because we think that they are like us, and they not. They don't. They know that they don't. You don't think like them, right? That's right. But we don't know that they don't think right. like us. See, and I tell you another thing. All along, when you dealing with them. They always have some ulterior motive. motive. In some way, shape, or form, there's an ulterior motive as to where they're going to utilize you. And a lot of times, they don't care if you utilize them. Mm -hmm. But as long as they can utilize you, if you if you if you're dealing with a white person and y'all both utilizing each other, they'll go on forever and ever and ever like that. As long as they gain something from mm -hmm. utilizing you and you getting something out of it. But they're not gonna deal or do anything for person a uh, person for the common good. Mm -hmm. They don't do things just because it's the just the right thing to do. They're gonna do it for a reason that they're gonna benefit from it. And really, what they don't understand, a lot of us are not like that. Mm -hmm. Many of us gonna do things because it's just the right thing to do. do. They they make criminals out of us. Mm. They did everything to take the righteous man by nature, the righteous human being, the original man, and make him out to be a criminal. Mm -hmm. And they did that through media and all these other different uh, um, but even, forms of but even uh, in, communication. And then, mass communication. then even in that, they want to. They want to make you. They want to. Uh, they want to 
paint the picture like you just are some kind of criminal. You just came from nowhere. Whatever we are, they made us. That's right. They taught us. We've been living in this country for 400 years. We've had no other teachers, no no other examples. We learned about gangs by, by because of them, because they got gangs. We learned about drinking and smoking and doing reefer because they was doing it. Prostitutes, everything that we all came from them. Then they want to get mad and then we want to talk about look at y'all what you. And you taught all these. You taught us about pimping. And toxicants come from them. From them. What what Africans do? Is there any place in Africa where they created some intoxicants of some sort? They came. They 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 did that, and. They might have intoxicants, but it was part of religious practice. Yeah. And then they would do it. It was nowhere where somebody sit around and we going to get drunk and high and all like that. They did it for, they, they had, they used, they had those type of plants and, and right. whatever. But that was for religious purposes. And that's why they was having those experiences. Right, they, right, they, right. They, they was getting high. <laughs> right. But white man took the stuff. Said we could have fun. Fun. This is a part of a socialization. Just this country was born being because of, 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 from drunkards. They had to have their whiskey. They got to have, I mean, they got to get drunk. They fight over that stuff, you know. Yeah. But, uh, brothers and sisters, all thing I want to say, we're going to bring this to this little talk to conclusion, is that we need to stop being jealous of one another and do whatever we can to lift one another up. I myself mirror all kinds of videos, and I always give shots out, and I try to help brothers and sisters. I've, st I've actually helped some brothers and sisters not get terminated. Here I am fighting termination myself and I'm helping other people. Have they helped me? No. They have not murdered not one video. Haven't even gave me any credit for helping them. That's really tacky and it's, re it's really sad. We need to break out of that type of mentality. Because we want all that. We want the attention. We want to be seen. But look at the attention you would get if you can come up out of this condition and build a nation. You'd be the most greatest set of human beings that have ever walked this planet. Because you and I coming together, coming up out of our zombieism and building a nation that the scriptures call a righteous nation. You'll become the examples of the whole world. And I guarantee you when they see how well that you're doing, nobody wants no more of this no more. Because even the white folks, even the hell raisers, sick of dying in death and destruction. They sick of it. But that's all they know. But if they saw an example of what they are being taught in, in Bible and Quran on the earth, they're like, wow, I'll give that a try. I want to be like that. And it's in you. The gift to bring this into existence is, is in you because we've earned it. We've earned the right to be the catalyst to bring bring this heaven which is meant for everybody. But we are, what like what they said, we are the first begotten. We are the first to be raised from the dead. Because we've earned that position. Not because we're so smart or, or anything or, or really special. It's because we've earned it. It's called, it's called justice. It's just that since we've been through all this hell, we've been through all this suffering. It's just that we've been we that we be given a chance to bring into existence what the scriptures call heaven on earth. So we need to get up out of these this selfishness because that that can't go into the next into the next life. That's why we still stuck here. If we're gonna continue to behave the way we behave right now, we might as well just stay here because. No, no mother is going to allow some child from outside with dirty feet come in on her brand new floor. So if this is a brand new place, a brand new ideology, ain't nobody, I mean, it'd be dumb. It's not logical to allow some sucker to come in with their dirty shoes and start trapping up your stuff. Because if you was evil and wicked here, the only thing you do is go to a new place and do the same, the same thing. And that's not going to happen. We might as well just stay where we are. And we should stop being angry at the white man. We should stop tripping off white people, period. I'm not saying teach our babies and teach ourselves, understand the causes of our problem. Because they are the root. That's why we are here in America, period. We must understand what has happened to us and they are at the root of the situation. But we need to really stop tripping off of them. Because they, they don't, really, they can't stop us. The white man did not stop Marcus Garvey. They really stopped themselves. White man 
did not stop Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam. They stopped themselves. The white man did not stop the Black Panther Party. They stopped themselves. They couldn't. They tried to stop them. Cointel Pro and all these different. But basically, we stopped ourselves. They can't stop us. You know why? Because we are the original people. The maker, the owner, God of the universe. We are that. And when, you, and when you start acting that way, right. when you start acting that way, they can't do nothing. We made them. That's right. They, we, they can't stop us unless we cooperate with them. The right. Kind of way. That's right. They can't stop us. And they know they can't stop us. That's why they're doing everything they, they, they can to try to keep you out of that mentality. Once you come into your right state of mind, into the right mentality, it's over for them. That's why they keep you drunk, keep you with a penis in your mouth. Or, or lick your vagina. Yeah. Or, 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 or entertain. Entertainment tonight. And all this other foolishness. Man fighting a woman. The woman fighting a man. All this other garbage. That's why they keep you distracted. With all this foolishness. Keep us in fantasy land. Either through religion. Fictional religion. Or they. Or. And I'm guilty of this. Because I want to go see the Avengers. But that's fictional fantasy. <laughs> That's fictional fantasy stuff. We ain't, all got something. Ain't no such thing as an Iron Man and an Incredible Hulk. But they all, oh, and they, you know, they start you off with cartoons as a child. Mickey Mouse, mice don't don't talk. And then in cartoons, the mouse always beat up the cat. That ain't how it go. Cats always eat rats. It's very rare, rare that a mouse or a rat will beat up a cat. It's very very rare. Why we? Why you on that note? You yeah. mentioned something. I just wanna. To get some across to people that that is one important <coughs> thing that we need to be able to overcome yeah. this uh, this stigma that if a person fights out against racism, yeah. that makes them a racist. Man. I'm glad you brought that up. A yeah. lot of people feel with well, a white man, the enemy got you thinking that if you speaking out against racism, you are racist mm. and you are a flip side to the Aryans and yeah. to the clans, clans and right. things like that. We fighting out against it. Right. That don't mean we racist. Right. We just in the mix with them. We're trying to destroy that mentality yeah. of racist white people who are trying to destroy us. But not through physical violence. Uh -huh. We want to do it by waking each other up. And that is the that right there is the main thing that that's our fight right there. Yeah. That's how we fight by waking each other up. And but man, break that down to why is it that if we fight out against racism, we are called racist. Right. And by who? I, I mean, mean, what's your understanding on that, man? Well, that's nothing but reverse psychology. You know, that's that's just, just just another way of trying to make the victim the perpetrator. It was racism. How are we going to deal with our situation when it was racism? That was the white man. That's what caused our problem. But if we talk about it, you are racist. You you this and you you this and that. I have to talk about white folks because that's what put us in the condition. That's who did it. That's who created the racism. That's what put us in the position that we're in. I have no choice. For those who try to avoid that issue, then you're a fool. You're fooling, you you ignorant, and you're gonna continue to stay in the condition that you're in because you have to in order to kill a weed, you gotta kill it by a root. If you don't kill a weed by a root, it just go bloop. You keep oh, uh, and you keep running the lawnmower over it or whatever, and it go bloop. As soon as you cut the cut the top part off, the weed go bloop. So how the hell is damn weed? But if you pull that root out of there, you might come back. From some season, but you ain't gonna come back here, cause I got the root out of there. So we have to talk about this issue, and this is not going to, this this situation is not going to clear until we deal with the reality of it. And just because I didn't have nothing to do with it, or whatever, but the reality is that you benefit from it. This country was born and made from it. We have to deal with the what actually happened. And then they always talk about move, move on about the past. Forget about the past and move on. The problem is we don't know the past. We really don't. We have a watered down version, some rinky dink version of what happened to us. We really don't know. And here's another thing that gets me that. We don't know the past to forget. The, white, the whites want us to forget about all this, our past. Yeah. But it, 
they don't forget about their past. No, they don't forget they about their past. They bring it up every chance they get. Every chance. It's a part of what makes them who they are. Right. It, it, and, and they want us to say, look, we don't want y'all to think about right. slavery and right. all this other stuff. Right. But they don't understand that our history is their history. It's their history. Same thing. That's the history that we have. Right. We don't use that as an excuse for any condition that yeah. black people are in. Yeah. But it's a part of the reason why we in the situation that we in. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of other things to it too that uh that uh it's other factors that makes things <coughs> part of what they are now. Mm -hmm. But the main focus right now what we on, we trying to let people be aware of what's going on and our past has a lot to do with where we at today. Mm -hmm. So we if we talk about slavery I don't care about slavery. Let me tell you what. Let, actually, this, let me tell you about a deceiver. Deceivers always want you to won't you forget the past and move on. So if I slap you in your yeah. face today and then you see me tomorrow, I'm going. Hey, what's going on? Uh -huh. Oh man, forget about me slapping you in your right, face. Right, right. Because I'm gonna slap you again as soon as I get a chance. Right. I just want to get your mind off of yesterday. Yeah. Right. And they also don't want you. Maybe perhaps they don't want you to see something they don't want you to see. Look at the George Zimmerman uh -huh. with the uh, O.J. Simpson deal. Mm -hmm. They relate those two cases as black against white, mm -hmm. even though they well George Zimmerman he's a Latino. He right up on who who he riding. He you know what's up with yeah. him, man. He is a person that the whites can use. Uh -huh. He a perfect example. He's not white. He's Latino, uh -huh. but he's white washed in the mind. He got a in white the, yeah. mind. Yeah. So. Here's our chance to get back at you for O.J. Simpson. <laughs> that a, a, a young black boy was murdered mm -hmm. unarmed. Right. When you think of an unarmed black, uh, when you think of an unarmed person being shot and killed by the police, the first thing you think of is a black person. It uh -huh. automatically come to your mind. Then again, when you think of a, a, a <coughs> crack salesman or somebody selling crack, when you hear the word crack, what you think of? <laughs> you think of a black person. Mm -hmm. See, this is how they control how we conclude mm -hmm. in images. This is how they conclude the images. This is how they control the images, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. By saying certain words, you think of a certain thing. You know what I'm saying? And I mean... And these, and I'll tell you something else. Deceivers always want you to forget the past and move on. Yeah. Deceivers also don't like you to ask questions. They don't want you to ask no questions. Whenever you come around somebody and they got a problem with quick questions, you really need to watch really need to look at them. You can come here and ask all the questions that you want. But see, the difference between messing with some other person and coming to the Realities Temple, don't you know I would tell you, I don't know. I have no problem with telling you that. I'm not going to make up some kind of answer for something that I don't know. Or I'll tell you, i got to think about that. You got me. You know, that's something I never thought about. But uh, you have people that don't like questions because they said they got all the answers, but if you keep hitting them with questions, then they stop, don't like it. Because, see, they're giving you delusional, fantasy, fictional, or even deceitful answers anyway. Yeah. That's why they don't like questions. And people, a lot of people who, are, who, who are, uh, have ulterior motives realize, as long as people ask them questions, uh -huh. that person that's the ask, asking the questions is at an advantage. Uh -huh. Anytime you being drilled with questions, right. you at a disadvantage. Uh-huh. So remember that uh, people that don't like to ask questions, they're hiding something. Mm -hmm. Or they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Mm -hmm. they, yeah, we, because they they just talking a bunch of... Right. That's right. Talk. That's right. Talk. A bunch yeah, of talk. With nothing behind it. No substance whatsoever. None. Man. But as long as you come in, you listening to these words, that's why many of these haters of the Realities Temple, that's why they have problems with us here, is because I can tell you I don't know. But if I have an answer for you, it's going to be a hell of a answer. It's going to be on the real. Because that's what we represent here is reality and right. facts. I'm not going to be bringing you, oh, this is what I think. I could tell you a lot about my opinion. I have some opinions about different Everybody things. Everybody got opinion. Everybody got opinion. But I don't want to base it on my particular opinion. I want to base it on what I, as far, as close as I can get, as factual and as real as I can get. Right. That's what, that's what I want. And if somebody willing to challenge these questions on uh, as far as how we can get with truth or yeah. with f fact, then I mean, you're welcome to uh, come and uh, ask all the questions you want. Right. 
and, and you know, so, uh, brothers and sisters, just think for yourself. Start thinking outside of the box. Stop talking about what well, you know the Bible said and President Obama said, and it says in the Quran, I want to hear for a change what you say. I want to know what you are. You have your own brain, your own thing. We all are influenced by different things, but yet, it's, but at the same time, we are we are who we are. I want to hear who you are. I want to. I always told my, uh, brother Andre, my assistant here. I don't not want him to be a clone of me. I want him to be who he is. I don't want another Tali clone, even though that'd probably be nice to see another cat. You know, <laughs> you know whatever. Give you a good example. <laughs> you eat pork. Yeah. I don't eat pork. No, I don't. I eat mean, pork. you don't eat pork. Right. Right. Sorry. <laughs> this brother don't eat. No, pork. I don't eat pork. I eat some pork. Yeah. Uh, he is certain things he do. I don't do. Right. I do. Yeah. There's certain things I do. He don't do. Right. But we all have. A, uh, we all recognize our own individuality. Yeah. But we all want the same exact thing. Uh huh. And I want to say this. You know that. Uh. Like the brother said, man, mm -hmm. be yourself. Be yourself. Man. Quit hiding behind the Bible, the Quran, uh -huh. or, the or, Torah, or whatever it is. Or a you picture know. on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> no face. Because if you lie behind a picture, that's no face. You make videos and you make comments. Well, you make videos focusing on some object. Uh, it's a word for that. I forgot the word. Uh -huh. Or you make comments. It's okay to do that. Yeah. But if you're going to have, if you're going to make response videos, have the balls and the nerve to show your damn face. <laughs> Come on, man. Quit hiding. Them drive-bys. But, but, you know, but while we're we talking about that, only criminals hide behind because, you know, when you do a criminal activity, you know, you got to put on a mask. You hide. You know, because you robbing a bank. You need to put a, you a hide. mask. Even the Lone Ranger. Now, the Lone Ranger was a good guy. But but when they when you see a mask, when people hide behind a mask, they're trying to hide their identity because they up to no good. Oh Batman. Oh Batman. Oh Batman. The reason why he did it because he wanted to conceal his identity. Yeah. He didn't want nobody to really know who he was. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Because if they knew who he was, he yeah. didn't want his left hand to know what his right hand was doing. Right, right. So therefore, but we don't hide. Right. I'ma show you my face. Uh-huh. I ain't got nothing to hide. I don't have nothing that could that could be exposed. Mm-hmm. I got a criminal history. This brother don't. Mm -hmm. I put my name out here on this. And anytime somebody want to look up my criminal history, you just go right ahead. Because I ain't had, I ain't got nothing exposed. Mm -hmm. You're going to see me for who I am in the daylight. Right. You know what I'm saying? But uh, but y'all who talk and try to degrade and make mockery, what you hiding? Why you hiding behind a picture? You know, I, I really, I, you know, a lot of these people... Oh, you you was a you was in prison, or you do this and you do that. What do you do? I'm not ashamed of who I am, or what I am, or what I say. I'm willing to die behind what I say and who I am. What, what about you? You sitting around hiding behind a picture because you scared to lose some job, or somebody might know you. You don't want them to know that that's how you really think because you probably smiling in somebody's face. And then you talking about them behind their back. Then they see you on YouTube. Oh, that's what you really think. Or oh, they scared somebody going to ridicule. Oh, yeah. Your family and friends ridicule you. Yeah. Because you know, you're not I... professional. Or you're not saying things right. Or uh -huh. you, you you just don't fit what they feel. Uh, 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 you don't fit speak. up to their standards right. or something. Uh, you know, something like that. I ain't, we ain't worried about that, yeah. man. We know... And then some people make videos where they scared of criticism. Right. They scared somebody gonna talk about them. They can't take uh, 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 people lashing out at them. People, the mud flinging and all that. I love Nobody it. Nobody give a damn. And you know, I love it. I thrive off of it. I like when people get all. Uh, see, that's the reason why they have to false flag my channel. Because they see, I enjoy it. I like to fight. And see, if you are a real black revolutionary, you have to like this fight. You have to like the beating. You have to like the mud slinging. You have to like whatever, whatever is, is involved in this. You have to love it. You have to like it. You know, it was a, it was a. We're gonna end this, conclude this video on on this point here. It was a, uh, a colonel or somebody in the military, and they had interviewed him, and he said that as a soldier, he had to, you know, you have to learn how to love, how to kill. Unfortunately, that's what a soldier is supposed to do. So if you enjoy killing, that's your job. Then that's I mean that's I mean that just makes it easier for you. 
in order if you want to make this job of of liberating your people enjoy you got to enjoy doing this right. you have to enjoy the criticism not only the, the not just making videos and people like it but him when the attacks come I'm like come on attack me that's why they have they have no choice because they know that I thrive off all that stuff I like make videos about me they don't even make videos about me no more because they know I love it <laughs> I, I thrive off of yeah. it I enjoy it nothing that you can say can hurt me I've been I've been called names all my life the only thing that can hurt this reality's temple and can hurt me is the truth. If you bring the truth, it might hurt, but I will bow down to it. Unlike y'all, because y'all get all hurt and want to talk about somebody. And I said, damn, brother, you made a good point. You know, just like the sister told me, maybe I need to stop, you know, would you uh, stop using, which I don't use a lot of profanity anyway, but could you tone it down some more so I, so my children can, can listen to you? No, no big deal. But then you got Negroes here on YouTube. I'm, I'm going to be me. I'm going to do what I say. You don't have to listen to me. To me, that's ignorant. I want you, to baby, to listen to my message. You might as well be talking to the mirror. Yeah, might as that's well talk the to the you mirror. You don't care what people think. Yeah. Now, in that particular case, because I want my message to be listened to. If that's all it takes to clean me up myself up so more people can listen to it, that ain't about nothing. Because my, my message has not been affected by it. This is this, the same thing, because if it wasn't the same thing, I'm still being false flag. Still, the same folks that hate me still hate me. So, you know, but the message is still there. But now I, more people can listen to it. And our children, our babies, our teenagers need to listen to this message, to what we have to say. So, you know, with that, with that on that note, let, let us get out of here. 69, yeah. student and minister of action for the reality Step on Earth. Peace out. Yes, sir. And make sure that you continue to support and mirror these videos and uh, help us in, the, in these efforts on and support the channels Daily Motion, Vimeo, and Friends on Facebook. This is your brother, uh, the, the mighty, the mighty one, Angel Snub Number 7, calling and saying all the 5,000, and y'all help us out and, and peace out from Chicago. Thank you, Chicago, and we out of here. All right.